This video goes with section 40 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, and it covers the position of the adjective, both attributive position and predicate position. You can find this in Hansen and Quinn on pages 92 to 93. Now, when we're talking about attributive position, we've actually already had a video on this back for section 16, but I'll go ahead and review what we did there. We learned that the article helps to organize a Greek sentence and that you're going to become very fond of it, that attributive position is formed by a noun and the article that agrees with it, and that every article agrees with its noun and case, number, and gender, just like adjectives. Anything in attributive position, and there can be lots of different things in attributive position, a prepositional phrase, a genitive noun, and, and this is the reason why we're looking at this um, in this unit when we get adjectives, adjectives can be in attributive position. And so anything in attributive position is about the noun that it is in attributive position to. That's how we say it. So anything in attributive position is an attribute of the noun. We learned that there are three ways to do attributive position. That if you have an article and then an attribute and then the noun, you have attributive position. And I like to call this the sandwiching kind, where the attribute is sandwiched between the article and its noun. And I gave you the example early on of hoi tu adelfu logoi, the words of the brother where of the brother, a noun in the genitive, is in attributive position, so it's telling us more about which words we're talking about. We also had an example with a prepositional phrase to specify which brothers, hoi ente hora adelfoi. So ente hora, the prepositional phrase, sandwiched in between the article and a noun, and so in attributive position, and that means the brothers in the country, telling us which brothers we're talking about. And now with adjectives, you can put adjectives sandwiched in between as well, and then they're in attributive position. And so if instead we had hoi kakoi adelfoi, we would be talking about the bad brothers. Kakoi becomes an attribute of the brothers. So that was the first way, the sandwiching way, maybe the most popular way for Greek to do attributive position. But we also have article and its noun, and then another article agreeing with that noun, and then the attribute. And I've started to call this the sticky way to do it because it sticks an attribute um, afterwards onto the noun. And so I gave you these examples early on. Hoi, logoi, hoi to Adelfu. That second article sticks an attribute onto the noun, and we get the words of the brother again. Same with the prepositional phrase, hoi adelfoi, hoi en te hora, the brothers in the country. Which brothers are we talking about? The ones in the country. And so that second article sticks the attribute to the noun. And again, we can do this with adjectives as well. Hoi adelfoi, hoi kakoi, those are the bad brothers. I told you when I first introduced this kind of attributive position, that sometimes the sticky sort of attributive position can be thought of in more of an afterthought usage, more like the words, the ones of the brother. But either way is correct, and it can be just as neutral as the sandwiching kind of attributive position. I also told you about the third sort of attributive position in which you simply take the article, the first article off, and it is attributive position, sticky kind, with the article after the noun, but no first article before the noun. And that's still attributive position, and that is translated the same way as number two, as the first kind of sticky attributive position. So, logoi hoi tu adelfu, the words of the brother, adelfoi hoi kakoi, the bad brothers, or perhaps the brothers, the bad ones. So those are your three kinds of attributive position, article, attribute, noun, the sandwiching kind, article, noun, repeated article, and attribute, the sticky kind. 
and just noun and article and attribute, and that's the other sticky kind. In each case, what makes attributive position is the article before the attribute. The article is right before the attribute, and that's how you can recognize it as attributive position. If you have an article, a noun, and an attribute, but the article is not in front of the attribute, what you have is predicate position. So here, um, the article is there and it agrees with the noun, but the modifier, the attribute, but the modifier doesn't have the article immediately preceding it. If you have this situation, an article, a noun, and a modifier, and the noun and the modifier are in the nominative, you may actually have a whole sentence where you supply a verb that tells you that the noun is whatever the modifier is. So in Hakakos Adelphos, in attributive position, you've got the bad brother because the article precedes immediately the modifier. But if I have Ha Adelphos Kakos, the article is not immediately preceding the modifier. What we have is a whole sentence, the brother is bad. And this is predicate position. So let me show you some more of this. We talked about it earlier on in section 16, and that was the example I gave you. But Hansen and Quinn wasn't talking about predicate position yet. So let me tell you a little bit more about it. You have an article and a noun in the nominative and a modifier in the nominative that agrees with it. And you supply a verb, is or are, and what you have then is what's called a nominal sentence. Now we will have other uses of predicate position. Some adjectives are specialized words that when they appear in predicate position mean specific things and we're not forming a nominal sentence. But here what we're going to see very often is the most common use of predicate position, I believe, where you have something in the nominative with an article and something else in the nominative that agrees with it and what you do is supply is or are as a linking verb to make this into a whole sentence. So we've seen ha adelphos ka kos, the brother is bad. Hai ecclesia, article and noun in the nominative. Kalai, modifier in the nominative, but not in attributive position, in predicate position. So we're going to supply are because now we're plural. And what we get is the assemblies are good. A whole nominal sentence, a whole sentence without a verb, we supply the verb because Greek is economical and won't use a word when it doesn't have to, when we can understand it. So we will understand are here in a plural nominal sentence. We could also say assemblies are good instead of the assemblies are good because Greek having no indefinite article sometimes uses the definite article to make statements about a general class of the noun that we're talking about. So this could be either the assemblies are good with the definite article in English and we're talking about specific assemblies that we know about or assemblies are good where we're not talking about a specific situation but want to talk about assemblies generically to say that they are a good thing. When you see a noun in the nominative and an adjective in the nominative that agrees with that noun, but there's no attributive position and perhaps no verb around, you probably have a nominal sentence. Hansen and Quinn will give you lots of these to practice with and be on the lookout for them. Now, another thing you can do that makes a nominal sentence is to have an article and a noun and then another noun all in the nominative. Here, you have another form of nominal sentence. For instance, hostephanos doron. Hostephanos, nominative. Doron, nominative. But I have a period there and no verb. What this is, is another kind of nominal sentence. I'm going to supply is and say the crown is a gift. When you run into these, you have to decide how to express them in English. And with two nominatives, you need to decide which comes first, which is going to be the subject in English. And actually, Greek usually tells you in a nominal sentence with two nouns, 
usually what we think of as the subject, what the sentence is about, is going to be the noun that has an article. Now you will run into nominal sentences where both nouns have articles, but if only one of them does, choose the one that has an article as the subject of the sentence, that is to say it's going to come first in English, and then make the other noun the predicate. So, hostephanos doron, the crown is a gift. If we had it in the other, other order, doron hostephanos, we would still make this translation in English, the crown is a gift. Because hostephanos, stephanos is the one that has the article, it's going to be the one that's the subject, and that in English comes first by our conventions and ways to express the same idea. So that's a review, mostly, of attributive position and a little bit more detail about predicate position, which we didn't have officially until now. Be on the lookout for both, and as I've said repeatedly, the article is going to make your life a lot easier if you pay attention to all the things that it tells you is going on in a sentence.